I believe in me. I believe in me. I believe in you. I believe in you. Stand strong. You are powerful. Stand strong. You are inspiring. We are fighters. We are ambitious. We are extraordinary. We are conquerors. Simply, Simply Straight, straight talk, talk, our, our voices, voices will, will be, be heard. heard. This is Simply Straight Talk. Yeah. Tune in now, you don't want to miss out. Real conversation, plenty motivation. Uh -huh. Keep you thinking and still entertaining. Yeah, I know that you'll enjoy the Mido's free. Your voice is your choice. Hosted by Reggie B, but you already know. And you gotta check them out and how we roll. Hey, ain't nothing off the table. Give it to you straight. Changing your mindset, talking past mistakes. You ain't gotta wait, time to take off. This is Simply Straight Talk. I'm Melissa, and this is the Simply Straight Talk podcast, where we engage in solution-based conversations with tips on how to overcome and move past the challenges and struggles we face in life. So join in, and let's show the world you got what it takes. It's showtime. Let's hop on this train of motivation. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Simply Straight Talk podcast. Listen, today... First, let me, before I jump into this, I got to say thank you. Shout out to everybody who listens to the show, continues to support the podcast, man. I really appreciate it. Like I said, this is not about money. This is just about putting out some positive vibes, man, things we can learn from. So, yeah, some of it's going to sound like a little bit of a rant or a gripe, but in the end, we always sum it up with something positive because that's what it's about. You can learn from it either way. Now, let's get into the show and with the Today, we're going to be talking, well, basically asking the question, let me get my words right, does customer service matter today? And I bring this to your attention because when you work in the customer service field, and a lot of people don't realize that their job is based on customer service. And although your job may be to work at a cash register, that's customer service. Your job may be a security officer, customer service. Your job may be bank teller, customer service. You know, administrative aid, customer service. You know, everything you do when you work for a company, you are a representative of that company. Whether it be building services, whether it be a financial support, it's customer service. Everybody in the organization participates in customer service. Now, what made me bring up this subject was recently I went to Best Buy because I wanted a laptop charger and then I wanted to buy laptops. I wanted to buy a Chrome and I wanted to buy a regular laptop. So a Windows and I wanted to buy a Chrome. So when I went into Best Buy, I'm looking at the chargers, trying to figure it out because the prices, as always, never put together the way they should be. So... One of the guys from Best Buy walks over, who works in the computer section, walks over. I'm going to be getting above your head in a minute. I'm like, okay. So I just walked on down. So he gets on the thing. What do you need? I said, I'm looking for a laptop charger. Oh, how old is your laptop? I says, four, about four to five years old. You need a 65 watt. Here you go. Have a nice day. And I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself like, this whole conversation should have went a different direction because he could have simply said, Hey, excuse me, sir. Can I help you with something? Oh uh, yeah. I'm looking for this, this, and this, 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 and this. Okay. Well, uh, let me help you. Well, we got this, we got this. Um, this one costs this much. This one costs that much. Uh, how old is your laptop, type of laptop you have and this and that, you know, it just could have went so much different. And if I said, Oh, I'm just kind of looking around right now. Oh, no problem, sir. Do you mind if I grab something real quick? I got to get one of those boxes from above me. See, that's how that conversation should have went. Instead of this, mm, mm, got to catch myself. Instead of this very rude person trying to assist me. He wasn't just rude with me. He was rude with other people. Now, let's talk about some examples of rude customer service. Number one, when you go through the drive through and they forget to put something in your bag. And you say, oh, excuse me, you know, I'm, I'm missing 
my burger or I'm missing my fries and they get mad at you. They're upset with you because they forgot or got your order wrong. They got it wrong. But they're mad at you because they forgot to put your sandwich or whatever in the bag. They messed it up. It's right on the screen. It's right there, right above them, what's supposed to be in the bag, but they got it wrong. They give you the wrong soda, but they mad at you. You go to buy something, so you ask somebody, excuse me, do you have this in this size? Well, all we have is what's up there. Like, okay. They get mad at you for asking them questions. When you go to a restaurant, and I'm not talking about people who play games. I'm talking about you literally told the person, hey, can I get a burger with no onions? Now, I personally love onions on my burger, but let's just say somebody said, can I get a burger with no onions? Did you say you didn't want no onions? My God, damn. I, I told you that before you brought it out. You don't want to let them put the onions on. Did you not check it before you brought it out? That's why I appreciate good servers that when you order something, they actually review your order and say, wait a minute, he wanted no onions on this burger, so this has to be redone. I like good servers like that. But most of them would bring it out and get mad at you because they put something on your food that you asked not to be on it. You know, you get people that get mad when you walk up to them and ask them a question. You get people that get mad because they get your order wrong. They type something in wrong. They do. I've been to a place to where literally I gave them my driver's license, gave them my driver's license. I was going to this hotel. I gave them my driver's license. Check me in. He checked me in under somebody else's name. I'm like, and I'm thinking like, why is this coming out like this? So I'm trying to get him to understand till finally he said, well, look, Mr. Constantine. I said, my name is not Constantine. My name is Madness. It's on my driver's license right there in your hand. Can you not read? That's what I wanted to say. Can you not read? If you can't read, just ask me. I would have told you. But the dude checked me in under somebody else, screwed up my point stuff, took money out of my account because he charged me for more nights than I was staying. But then again, he was upset with me because he didn't know how to read. <laughs> well, maybe he could. I don't know. He got to know how to read. But he didn't take time to really read my ID to verify. You asked for my ID. Should you not have matched my ID with the reservation? Okay, the ID says Reginald. This name says John. Wait a minute. Let me check again because apparently I'm looking at the wrong reservation. You can't get mad at the customer for your mistake. Now, I understand that there are times when customers are going to be jerks. I get it. There are customers that are going to be jerks. They're not going to know how to treat people. They're going to try to get over, trying to return stuff. They know they didn't buy somewhere, you know, asking for stuff that they know they didn't order. I get all that. But I'm talking about when you got a customer who clearly states what they are looking for, what they are asking for, and the person gets mad at the customer. You're mad at the customer. You know, it's like when you call one of these companies and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to discuss my bill. I got bill for this. And they're telling you you're wrong. But when you try to explain to them, like, no, you're not looking at the right thing. You're not understanding my question. And I'm going to call a company out right now. Kaiser Permanente. Okay. Kaiser Permanente. My, I, I cannot ask, access everything on Kaiser Permanente's website. All the stuff, uh, you like notes from your doctor, test results, all this stuff. And every time I call Kaiser, you know what Kaiser says? Well, we're going to reset your counter, sir. You can just wait on 24 hours and then it'll be all set. I've been, they've been resetting my account for literally, I'm serious. For about four years, Kaiser has been resetting my account. The tech who's supposed to call never calls. And it's like, this is examples of poor customer service. Poor customer service. That's what it is. But do businesses not value customer service today? Do they not understand because everything is going online? 
Are they more focused on the fact that we rather people go online than to actually deal with customers in retail? And I understand because if they got more customers going online to buy stuff, that means they don't have to stock as much inventory in stores. So that's could be an issue. That could be the thing. You know, they don't want people coming to stores anymore. They want everybody doing everything online. But the problem is when you go online and you try to bring up an issue about a product, the next situation you get is customer support online is either lacking, either they're not uh, from this country. So there's a language issue going on. There's very few customer support. Uh, customer support people to actually take calls. So it's just a lot of conflict. And then Amazon, yeah, I'm calling all their names out today. Amazon, if you want to complain about a package, it's darn near impossible to find, like, who can you reach out to and call right there to talk about it? It's crazy. It's crazy. Because it's pretty much email. Email. I simply don't understand what is going on with businesses today to where they don't seem to value customer service, which is making employees, making employees feel value, making customers feel value. And a lot of times when customers complain about the customer service, the people in the corporations don't pay attention because there's one thing that they look at. That's the profit margin. Now, once they see the reports and profit margins dropping, then they're all ears, they're into it. But before the, after that, they don't care. They don't care. And it's clear. I posted something about my little Best Buy experience. Um, and you'd be surprised on Facebook and Instagram how many people were saying that they do not shop at Best Buy for that simply reason. Overpriced and poor customer service. Now, I'm the type of person, if I'm getting good customer service, I don't mind paying a few extra dollars for a product. If I know I'm getting good customer service, I got a knowledgeable employee about the product, you know, they're polite, they're professional. And like I said, not expecting them to bend over backwards, kiss my, you know, kiss my knees and follow me around, but just be professional and polite and knowledgeable. If I got questions, be able to answer them or direct me to somebody that can. That's what I'm talking about when I say good customer service. But it seems like today that a lot of businesses have just gone away from that. Like they have totally vacated the whole premises of customer service. Now, post pre-COVID, a lot of businesses were customer service focused. It was about making that customer feel special, making that customer feel welcome, making that customer feel like this is the place you need to shop and spend your money. Considering the fact that in today's market, especially with the inflation that we're all facing right now, it, it costs a lot. Everything has jumped up dramatically in prices. So you would think that when a customer walks in a store, in order to make them feel like they're getting, they're spending money in the right place, you want your customer service to be on point. You want your customer service to be on point. Because I think one of the few places that everybody do talk about is Chick-fil-A, maintaining their customer service, how they want people to feel. That's their whole marketing thing with Chick-fil-A, is the customer service. Remembering people, making people feel welcome when they come to Chick-fil-A making it a pleasant experience. There are other places where you simply just don't get that. You don't get it. And it's sad that this is where we have come to where we are totally abandoning customer service. Give us your money, but disregard customer service. And a lot of people are getting fed up with it. A lot of people are getting tired of it. And when stores try to send you online to do their shopping is kind of like okay yeah you got the product but you know what actually i can get this from another place cheaper so just because it's online your store is online there are other stores online as well to where you can get a better price and a better deal so that's that's the thing about it 
That's the thing about it. You know, it's just people just simply don't understand the whole thing about customer service and why it's important, why it matters. You know, customer service affects your brand. It affects who you are as an organization. And when you get people that really start to like hit you about your customer service, because at one point in time, it used to be word of mouth. That's how everything spread around word of mouth. But now it's not word of mouth. Everything spreads around now by social media. You can reach a wider audience of people through social media when people get or experience bad customer service. And that's what they do. Because you can no longer ignore the fact that people want value for their money and customer service is part of that value. People want value for their money. Customer service, I'm going to say it again. Customer service is a part of that experience. It is a part of the value that people are expecting when it comes to them actually being able to get the service they want. So you cannot ignore it. You cannot ignore the customers. You know, and I say this because there's a lot of young people out there who want to start their own business. They want to become entrepreneur. They want to become self uh, financially stable, you know, and they don't want to depend on these corporations to do it. I advise you right now to really put up and establish a customer service plan. How you will deal with customers. What, what is going to be your whole script for how you interact, how you deal with customers, how you address complaints, you know, how you greet customers. All of that needs to be considered. And I don't think a lot of people really think about that. I don't think people really do think about it. I think people look at it as customer service is just a hey, smile, say hi, and that's it. And it's so much more to it than that. And I think because people and a lot of corporations have simply followed on that and don't want to expand beyond that. So we have to look at the fact that customer service is a big part of today's world. It is a big part of today's market. So we have to make sure that everybody, everybody is getting that experience the right way. The right way. Too often, we're allowing, you know, companies to charge us tons of money without any consideration for how much we're spending in these stores, how much money that we're getting. Now, one thing I do want to say, listen, yes, you may be experiencing bad customer service. The wrong thing to do is to start yelling and screaming. That, that's not going to help anything. You know, and I see a lot of people who lose their customer service fight when they want to make up a, a complaint because they simply let their emotions get in the way. They're angry. They're upset. And it benefits nobody. And when they do call, let's say they, they call the police. Say, I got an angry customer. Even though you was completely in the right, the fact that your behavior and mannerism come across as aggressive, you're going to end up getting put out the store and you're not going to get what you was trying to accomplish done. So be calm, be patient. And listen, if you feel like you're not getting value for your money or you're getting constant poor service, you don't have to continue shopping at that place. You know, when customers come inside stores or they visit schools, I mean, like I say, every organization has a responsibility of maintaining quality customer service. You know, you don't have to continue feeding your money into a place that doesn't want to acknowledge that you are a value customer because you are a value customer. And for those companies that really do try to be a part of the community, they maintain good customer service. That's who you should be supporting. But if you're starting a business, this is something that you need to think about. How are you going to organize and establish your customer service so that you don't fall into the trap that these other companies have? One thing I like to tell people who are starting out as entrepreneurs, you don't have to compete dollar for dollar with some of these bigger corporations because you can be small. Let's say, let's say you want to compete against Marriott. All right. Well-known branded hotel. Let's say you want to open up a hotel. 
you may not be able to be you may not be able to build you know a hotel with 300 or 200 rooms but you might have the money to start off with a hotel that has 50 rooms so you can add more quality to your rooms but you can also up, upgrade your customer service experience something that they can't get when they go there that people say you know what yeah that's a well-known hotel but man when you go to this hotel when you go to reggie's hotel the customer service is amazing people love good service a quality product and good customer service that is so key to the success of a business so when we talk about customer service man you just got to really think about like a lot of these companies have abandoned customer service they're okay with taking your money but they're not okay with actually spending the time to make sure that they're giving you good customer service to go along with that product because overall when people say they want value by going somewhere part of that like i said is customer service that's part of the value of shopping somewhere or spending your money somewhere whether it's online or brick and mortar whatever it is whatever type business it is no business is excluded from customer service absolutely no business electrical companies police departments fire departments you know it's it's just you have to be mindful of that you know recently a uh, fire department came to respond to something and i watched the fire department walk in and when i heard the guy telling the fire department people like the firemen fire personnel that hey you know it was a false alarm da 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 the woman got really upset for some reason and nobody could understand why was she upset like she just started drilling the guy like you're not supposed to reset the fire alarm uh, you know that's not and the guy was like no didn't reset you know we just silenced the alarm well that's different he's like yeah we just silenced it we didn't reset it so it was just this whole thing of this attitude that she was bringing and everybody kind of looking like what the hell is going on customer service belongs to everyone not just one person and if one person in an organization is not living up to the customer service standards that a company proclaims that it has for its customers people are not going to say what well, this one person they're going to blame it on the company the entire company is going to take a hit so you got to be mindful of that for all you companies out there best buy popeyes okay <laughs> But listen, that's all I got today, man. I don't want to talk about the customer service experience because a lot of people chimed in. So apparently it's definitely something that's hurting right now, something that a lot of people are missing. So I just kind of wanted to toss it out there and share it with everybody. But hey, please continue to listen. Hey, and tell me about your customer service experiences, man. Like, I don't want to leave it talk about everybody was bad. Like uh, the Golden Corral, there's a young woman named Sandra, excellent server. Uh, I went to what, Long Longhorns, Longhorns Restaurant. Oh my God, Longhorn Steakhouse. I got extra excellent customer service there. So there are some places that I've been where the customer service has been absolutely outstanding. It's been outstanding. So there are different places you can go where you can really get custom, good customer service. I visited our uh, Hardee's um, in my little travels recently where the customer service was good. Um, Clarion Hotel in the ATL, excellent customer service, you know. So you can get good customer service, man. It just really, it just really, I've gotten good customer service at Walmart. Um, so there have been some places where I've gotten really great um, customer service to where shout out to them and normally when i do when i get that customer service i shout it out too so i don't just post stuff about bad experiences if i get good customer service i'm definitely going to let people know that this person provided excellent customer service hey y'all that's it for the day i hope y'all enjoyed the show don't forget to drop a line down below share your thoughts share your comments and i will see you next week thanks for joining us on this episode of the simply straight talk podcast Remember that you can join our email list at simplystraighttalk.com 
for more fun solution based conversations from the Simply Straight Talk crew. Stay positive and we'll see you next week.